Yeah, I'm curious to know what percentage of your life, or let's say a week, that you spend living as real life superhero, and also if you find that that's you know it's something that's manageable and sustainable, or have you found in your life there are times where you really have to step back? It, 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 really it becomes time. manageable on time. It, it's a learning process as you go along. I try to put as much time into it as I can, uh, when I can, but I have a family, I have work, I have obligations, so it, you try to strike a balance somewhere along the line. Um, it's difficult. Not everybody has the advantage of being single and being able to, to just do it. Is this uh, like an everyday thing or like a few times a week? It, it, when possible, it's an everyday thing. I'm, I'm out quite a bit. A lot of times without the costume. I'm out <laughs> undercover just watching and observing. Yeah. What what uh, like like what fraction of people that you know in your personal life know that this is another side of you? My family. Oh, so no, not even close friends. No. Um, I work in a very conservative industry, so if my name got out, it could cost me my job. Uh, what I'm doing is also dangerous. While the drug dealers and people on the streets do not perceive me as a direct threat to them yet. Um, it's also dangerous. If someone were to know where my family was, it could be used against me. As, as melodramatic as that sounds, it is, this is very dangerous. A lot of us have been threatened. Um, some of uh, my colleagues down in the States are forced to carry firearms um, for safety because they've been threatened and, and attacked. So very, very few people know who I am. What was one of your most uh, dangerous moments? I wouldn't say my most dangerous moment, what I perceived to be was, I turned around a uh, corner, around a building, and a fellow ran into me. And he had what I thought in his hand was a black automatic pistol. And he ends up putting it right up against me. I made a grab for it, and as I went to twist it and twist his hand, it broke apart, it was a squirt gun. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you I sat down afterwards and, and shook for a few minutes from the adrenaline and just realizing that if that had been real, you know, anything could have happened. Uh, speaking of potentially dangerous situations, um, how much do you know about and uh, what do you think about that uh, Phoenix Jones character that's operating down in uh, Seattle there? I know Phoenix. He's a very good guy. Um, people ask me my honest opinion of him all the time, and I'll give it to you right now. Is he crazy? He certainly is. Has he got a big heart and a good heart? Yes, he does. He believes very passionately in what he's doing. The kind of work that he does down in Seattle wouldn't work up here. Justice system is different, um, and the people that he's dealing with is different. He's a very good guy. His heart's in the right place. He's trying really hard to do something and make a real difference and be a symbol for people. That's all that lady move, yes? Um. I was wondering, as someone who works closely in the downtown east side, do you think that the general population's fear of that area is justified? I'm sorry, the downtown east side? Yeah, in the downtown east side. I find most people are generally afraid of it. Do you think that's justified? <clears throat> people that don't, that don't live there are definitely afraid of it. People that live there are even afraid. Um, the crime rate down there is just tremendous. It's, it's a, a lot of petty crime, a lot of small crime, people stealing so they can get drugs. Um, it's almost like an armed encampment. It's almost like a third world country down there, as I tell people. It's, it's just very bad. Uh, people are afraid. People are afraid to go in there. Um, to give you just one simple example, um, I did another documentary with a fellow from France. Um, he's very famous, him and his film crew. They were the ones that filmed that woman that was executed in the soccer stadium in Tehran. And the Iranian government put a price on his head. Um, his film crew, did not want to film down there. They felt it was too dangerous. Somebody. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned the real life superhero community, and you're obviously more in touch with it. At what point did you become aware of people doing this? And the second part of the question, who came first? Well, I decided on this on my own self, like I said, inspired by comic books, and that literally myself, you know, why can't there be a superhero? Why can't you do this? And I started researching on the internet, and lo and behold, I found out there were other people doing this. I found Geist down in Minnesota, Superhero down in Florida, 
um, Mr. Extreme down in San Diego, um, Entomo in Italy, uh, the lion in Africa. I found that, that there was a huge community. This community has been evolving for probably about 10 or 15 years. It's been around before Kick-Ass, the, the movie, um, and before a lot of the attention to superheroes, the Marvel movies and all that. Um, there have been people doing this. Um, and I found that out and started talking to them, asking questions, and got myself together that way. Just a second part of the question, though. Um, well, I think virally, the first person that I became aware of was Shadow Hair. I mean, it got passed around to everybody. Was who? Shadow Hair? Yes. It was a video that got passed yep. around. And that was on YouTube, yep. Yeah. yeah, on YouTube. That was sort of the first first event where everyone figured out. But you communicate with these people, and you kind of figured out where it began. Maybe it, in a unique position. There's, there's really, we've been doing that amongst ourselves in the community, trying to figure out where it began. Um, uh, the example there, Mr. Sticky, that goes back 10 or 15 years. Uh, there was Terrifica in New York. She used to escort uh, single women home at night to help them prevent being raped. That was about 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, about 20 years ago, there was also Super Burial down in Mexico City, championing for the poor. Um, up here in, in the Pacific Northwest, there was the Fox for a while. Uh, that's about 30 years ago, you know, so hard to say when it really started happening, when somebody actually first put on a mask and went out as a superhero, you know, to fight crime. Um, there's always been superheroes, just our basic conception of them is based on, on comic books and movies now. Has to be in a costume, has to be in a mask. But they've always been there in our history, just have to look for them. Uh, in the film, we met a couple of superheroes who were uh, motivated by faith. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if that's a very common thing in the uh, real life superhero community. It is. Um, many of us. I'm myself. I consider myself a born again Christian. I just do not have to say praise the Lord or hallelujah every time something happens. Um, many of us uh, feel that, that we are put here for a reason. We've been told to do this for a reason. Um, I never expect to be doing God's work in a mask, but this is where He seems to want me, so I do it. There's quite a few of us that are, are moved by faith to do this, um, and very few of us that actually preach or proselytize while we're out there doing it. Yeah, sure. I just uh, got one other thing, more of an observation thing. Uh, I noticed throughout the uh, throughout the film, as well as right now, you uh, bear the Canadian flag. Uh, and my curiosity is why is it just because you're a Canadian citizen, or do you feel that? Being a Canadian system has kind of like almost a, uh, an elevated value system, like we've been stereotyped. I always believed in cloning uh, Canada. When I go down to the States, to Seattle, um, San Diego, Los Angeles, anywhere I go, I always wear that proudly. To let them know that, that I'm from Canada, that Canada is a caring country, um, and it shows that, that even though most of these people featured were in the States, Canada has its own share too, and there's actually now more of us up here rather than just me. We have a young fellow in Anaheim, in Saskatchewan. Uh, we have Booster Man in Regina. We have uh, Crimson Canuck in Windsor. We have different people coming up, um, and we all are very proud to wear the Canadian flag and say, "Hi, I'm a part of Canada." Uh, 